Uh, in around three minutes, we're going to be joined by our next guest. Her name, Rachel Ostovich. She's been in the news um, as of late. She is competing on the January 19th card against Paige Van Zandt. Uh, you found out about this fight probably back in, I think, August. It was first reported by MMAfighting.com. And it has come in and out of the news for various reasons. And she is going to join us via the magic of Skype. Um, back in mid-November, November 18th to be exact, uh, news came out that she was hospitalized uh, early November 18th, suffering from a broken orbital bone. Um, a day or so later, we found out that her husband, a mixed martial arts fighter named Arnold Burdon, uh, was arrested on suspicion of second-degree attempted murder and that uh, Rachel had been granted a temporary restraining order against her husband. On uh, November 21st, we found out that Burdon was charged with second-degree assault. And on November 26th, we found out that he pleaded not guilty and that his, uh, self his claim would be self-defense when the issue goes to trial. Um, that would be the preliminary he hearing would be on February 18th. So that's when we first found out, and we, we found out um, about... Um, the news in mid-November, and then we found out that she would most likely not remain on the card against uh, Paige Van Zandt on January 19th. But very shortly thereafter, we found out that she was going to remain on the card, that it was her call, that she wanted to keep fighting, that it was very important for her to keep fighting, put out a wonderful statement um, about wanting to keep going, and everyone seemed very excited that she was going to keep on fighting. We then later found out in December that Greg Hardy was going to be on that same card, and that sparked a whole new conversation about both of them being on the same card. And a lot of people wanted to talk to Rachel about it. At that time, this was around the Toronto card. Uh, we uh, reached out to her. She didn't want to talk about it. She wanted to focus on the fight. But here we are, uh, less than two weeks away from the January 19th card, and she is uh, very kind enough and gracious enough to be joining us. So let us go to the magic of Skype and say hello to Rachel Ostovich. Rachel, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. It's good to it's good to have you. It's good to see you. Um, I just want to ask because we had an issue with a previous guest, Joanne Calderwood. Uh, do you hear any echo or feedback when I speak or when you speak? I think I do hear a little bit of echo when I speak, but um, that's okay. <laughs> If it's, I know that can be frustrating because I've been on that end. If it's annoying, we can try calling you again. Do you want us to try again? Is it frustrating for you? Um, I think it's okay for right now. Okay. Yeah. If it gets annoying, actually, I don't hear it anymore. Oh, Did you guys fix it? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it just kind of fixes itself. So if it does come up, just let me know and then we'll, uh, we'll rectify it. Okay. Okay. Thank you for doing Sounds this. Good. I appreciate it very much. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm in a lot better. Uh space mentally physically emotionally so i'm just happy to be here on the show uh first time for everything yes it is it is your first time on the show um and i've wanted to have you on for quite some time physically how are you doing physically i feel good i'm back to uh normal and i feel even better uh so yeah just taking it day by day this is uh this is not your average fight because there's so much attention for the first espn card and Paige is a big name and she's you know, she's coming back after a year layoff. Does it feel different? Does it feel like there are more? You're in the commercial I saw. Does it feel like this is, if not the biggest, the biggest fight of your career? I mean, yeah, definitely. This is the biggest fight of my career. Definitely dealing with bigger names. Uh, we're dealing with ESPN, being on the first card. Um, you know, it's kind of like we're making history here. So I'm super excited and just grateful humbled to be here and i'm so happy to be fighting honestly um so i i ran down before you came on i ran down the timeline of events um um regarding what happened between you and your mm -hmm. husband in mid-november how much are, are you willing to discuss are, are you able to tell us what happened on november 18th um you know i mean i can only say what has already been released i can't you know, go off on a limb here and put myself in danger because it is still an ongoing court case. Um, so 
I don't want anything to be held against me as well. So if we could understand that, that would be great. I'll try to answer as best as I can, um, but I'd be grateful. If Absolutely. We could be Absolutely. Yeah. Um, could you tell us what injuries you suffered that night? Uh, I dealt with, you know, a lot of bruising, uh, you know, no, no worse bruising around the body, uh, you know, uh, but nothing I can't handle. And, you know, I think emotionally it was more, uh, I suffered more emotionally these, the, you know, I'm, you know, still going through things, but, um, you know, as far as injuries, I got cleared, I'm able to fight and I'm working through it and I'm going to be there January 19th ready. Ultimately, you came to the decision to stay on the card. Was there ever a doubt in your mm -hmm. mind about remaining on the card? Did you ever consider, you know what, maybe I'll, I'll take a month or so off and come back in March? No, never. I always, I wanted to fight. Um, I love fighting. And once I signed that contract, you know, unless it's going to be really hard for me to pull out of a fight, honestly. Like, I know how it is to get pulled out, um, to be fighting and to like to be on the opposite end. You know, as for Paige, I'm sure she was training hard. She had some injuries and some things that she was going through herself. And, you know, when I make a commitment, you know, that means a lot to me. Like, I want to be a man, a woman of my word. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think that's an important, important thing to have nowadays. A lot of people, you know, don't keep to their word. And, you know, and I had every reason to pull out, drop out. Um, but I felt like this fight was just so much bigger than, you know, just me and my problems. I feel like with this fight and following through and, you know, that it can, you know, I want to, I want to be able to inspire and motivate others to show other people that, you know, you can do whatever you set your mindset to. Um, and like, we all go through problems. Just so happened, mine got blasted all over the internet, you know, and all over the world and the news and, you know, but everyone goes through struggles just like me, maybe even worse. And, you know, um, it doesn't matter. You can do, you can do whatever you want and whatever you set your mind to, I guess. That's what I'm basically trying to say and prove. What is it like to have a very personal thing like this between you and your husband? as you said, get blasted out to the world all over the internet. I'm sure tons of people are reaching out. Not only are you dealing with the incident, but then you're dealing with all the, you know, the attention that comes with it. What is that like? Uh, I mean, it was very hard. It was the first time that uh, I actually went through something like that. Turn it down. Sorry, I have my daughter with me. She's like blasting some YouTube in the oh, back. No problem. But yeah, it was very hard for us. You know, I think of my daughter every time I see, you know, these news articles. She knows how to work YouTube. And like the like the other day, like I caught her like, hey, Siri, um, m type in Rachel Ostevich. And, you know, the articles, articles came, popped up and she was watching it. And I was like, Ruby, what are you watching? And then I had to take away the phone. Like, it's just... Uh, it's it's hard in that aspect where it affects me so personally down to my daughter where she's gonna have to grow up seeing all of this you know everywhere and um, you know it's something that I'm still going through and still sifting through and trying to handle it the best way I can and be positive and um, just make this situation a good one. How is she doing? She's doing great. She's um, I'm very fortunate. She's very smart for her age. She's five years old. Um, she understands the situation to the best of her knowledge. And she's very accommodating and loving. She loves both of her parents. She loves her daddy. She loves her mommy, just how it should be. And, um, you know, it's hard. It, it's a hard situation with um, kids in general. But when there's kids involved, you know. Um, so I'm just, I'm just so grateful that I have lots of love and support around me and there's no shortage, there's no shortage of love for my, for my baby. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, I, I know the training camp is coming to an end and training camps, uh, in general, even the most mundane training camps, uh, can be an emotional roller coaster. Um, now that it's almost come to an end. Has this uh -huh. gone the way you expected when you decided, okay, I am going to 
proceed with the fight. You know it's going to be hard. What has it been like dealing with the emotions and, and all the news and the attention, but also getting ready for the biggest fight of your life? I knew that, honestly, every single fight I've ever had has always been, you know, very hard spiritually, emotionally for some reason. And I feel like every time I take a fight, you know, there's always going to be those battles that you go through that nobody knows about. And um, it's only something that you and, you know, your your family and your close friends know about. And then that's, so that's something that I've been dealing with for, for as long as I can remember. And, um, you know, something like this, where it's public, it's just a little different because now I have to handle other people uh, when before it's just me. So, I mean, there's so much more to fighting. Um, a lot of people don't see the behind the scenes of it all. And... Um, I think I'm going off topic. Am I no, no. <laughs> like, what is the question again? <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just, it's just, I just take it day by day and, and I try not to stress about things too much or overthink. Uh, we can only do what uh, I can only do what I can do. And the rest is up to God. I just got to hand it to him and just whew, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. <laughs> um, so it seemed like, you know, when, when the news came out um, and whether or not you were going to remain on the card, Everyone was talking about it. You came out, put your statement, and then, you know, everyone accepted that you were going to be on the car. But then when the Greg Hardy news came out, mm -hmm. it sort of reignited all over again, and you were kind of brought back in. Uh, what, was your, <laughs> what was your reaction when you found out that Greg was going to be on the same card as you? Um, well, I remember waking up to a whole bunch of stuff on Twitter, and I was like, what is this? What is going on <laughs> in the world? <laughs> and I was just like, um, I didn't really look into it too much because, you know, I was kind of busy, <laughs> like dealing with my old thing. And I got my daughter and, you know, life goes on. Um, but then I started getting calls and, you know, people reaching out to me. And I kind of just was like, well, um, this has nothing to do with me. <laughs> and I'm just, you know, I'm I'm focused on my fight. I'm focused on my, you know, nobody's story is the same. Nobody's situation is the same. I have nothing to do with Greg Hardy. I'm just grateful to be fighting again. And, um, you know, I believe in second chances. I'm glad he's making a, a turnaround. And, you know, I hope the same can happen for my husband and anybody else who's, you know, made a wrong choice. I mean, I've made wrong choices. And I'm so glad that, you know, you know, I was able to come back from those kind of things. You know, we've all we've all been, you know, you know, not on our best behavior but um you know for some people just they get caught or whatever whatever it may be but i don't know his situation i only know mine i can't speak on it i'm just really happy to be fighting honestly uh dana white said that he spoke to you um about greg being on the same card as you what was that <laughs> conversation like basically just like this i just told him the same thing i was like um i was like you know i I mean, that's not up to me. If you, whoever you put on the card is whoever you guys got. I'm just focused on my fight, and this is my big fight, and I'm not gonna give it up, no matter what. You know, I, I honestly didn't even know who Greg Hardy was. I'm so bad. Wow. <laughs> but um, you only yeah, found out so, about his story once all this news came out about him being on the same yeah. card as you. Yeah. So I didn't. I was clueless, honestly. So, um, yeah. I'm just happy to be fighting. Honestly, I, I don't know what's going on with him or his thing, but I'm focused on me. <laughs> uh, did the UFC call you about him being on the same card before the news came out or after the news came out? Uh, I believe it was after the news came out. Okay. Yeah. And and was there like an off, like, hey, if you don't feel comfortable about this, or was it just, you know, trying to speak to you about the thought process behind it all? Oh, no. Dana was very, very... Um, I feel like I feel like he's like some type of uncle or something because he was very like caring and nice about it and like oh we just wanted to make sure you're okay blah 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 and I just like every I seen like an interview with another news reporter and everything he said was what I said I know that he gets a lot of uh, heat about whatever but um, yeah there is no fishiness around that surrounding that thing yeah he was very concerned and as from the get for, with my situation from the very beginning as well.
Okay. I think he didn't even want me to fight, actually. I had to, like, convince him and beg him to fight. Like, he really, he, I felt like he really genuinely cares. Um, you're talking initially, when, when all this came out. They didn't want you to fight on the card? Yeah, I'm sure him and my manager just discussed it. But when, when I went back and I called him, I was like, I need to fight. Like, I don't care. Like, I, I got to fight. Like. I know this this is my fight and I need to fight and he was like, you know, you know, yesterday I, I didn't want you to fight and there was no way like but you telling giving me all your reasons and I see it from your you know, your your point of view and I understand and you know we're gonna make it we're gonna make it happen, blah 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 blah. And so I'm like, Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, what, so. what, what kind of messages of support, um, especially since you came out and made that initial statement as to why you wanted to res to remain on the card? Um, I'd imagine you got a lot of people supporting you. Um, mm -hmm. Did you did you get a lot, and did they, you know, did any of them, you know, really really touch you and and, and give you even more motivation oh, going God. into this fight? Yeah, I mean, just from the very get the get go of the when the news dropped, when I got pulled out, um, when I pulled, oh, I didn't pull out, I think my my coach and my manager you know they did that i never wanted to pull out but um when when the fight got canceled and then got re you know through this whole process there were so much people that were just so supportive and loving and not only that i was getting so much messages from from people around the world that just shared with me their stories and like similar situations and i would just you know i'd cry like reading it like it it's a it's a crazy thing like no i think it's so crazy that people want to share with me their personal stories and um feel comfortable enough with uh sharing with me and i really appreciate that you know i don't get to respond to everything but i do try my best to read a whole bunch of messages i get and um i'm just really grateful that you know we as people can relate to one another no matter what you know no matter our differences we're all going through some type of struggle and um i hope that with this fight and uh, living on my life that I can help others um, get out of situations like that are similar to mine and um, can just be better people, you know, better. Let's just be, let's be better humans, <laughs> you know, uh, you live you live in Waianae, correct? Correct. Uh, which is obviously where Max Holloway lives. That's where we kind of all learned about uh, Waianae, I think, in the MMA community. But I understand it's not, um, you know, the biggest place in the world. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and I'm wondering what it's been like for you with, you know, you becoming, you know, uh, 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 this news store, international news store, everyone talking about you for the last two months, but still trying to, you know, go about your daily life with your, with your daughter and the community and, and all that. Has that been difficult? Has it been hard to do the camp in Waianae with all this going around, going on around you? Um, you know, there's a lot more people who stop me to ask to take pictures, uh, I can't really go to Target anymore and not, you know, I just, I can't really do my mommy stuff. I usually like to go to Target and just like look at the sales and go <laughs> grocery shopping and do like normal things. But um, it's okay. I, I embrace it all because I'm just grateful that people want to take pictures of me. And um, I still feel the same, the, like the same girl that I was 10 years ago, you know, um, so you know um and then a lot of people we we know each other we're like family we grew up together so a lot of people are like uh ah, it's just rachel <laughs> uh. so that's cool i like that too um, that's a, a good thing about being home um yeah just taking it day by day um and w with your husband was this a was this an isolated incident or was this a problem that was happening for quite some time um this incident was definitely ruby isolated and um in a way where it was definitely the worst time you know uh we have gotten to you know other arguments before and stuff like that um there was you know other times where we would you know there's you know physical stuff you know that happened but uh this time was definitely the time where i was just like you know it's not how it's supposed to be <laughs> And um, you can only try for so many years, and you know I'm I'm sure I played my part too. Um, no relationship is perfect, but um, you know no 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 one should be you know 
putting their hands on anybody, no matter the reason or the case. And um, I think a lot of people need to know that. <laughs> when do you get to New York? I get in the 15th, the 14th, 14th, uh, 15th. As you know, New yeah. York is not some, you know, small place. It's kind of a, it's a crazy place with a lot of media and it's uh, been compared to a circus sometimes, right? A lot of attention, mm. a lot of cameras. Are, are you ready for what's to come in New York when you get there next week? Um, if it's been anything like this past couple months, then I think so. I think I'll be ready. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean... You know, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty chill. I don't really let things get to me. Um, so I'm excited for the process. I know it's part of the job, so take it. What do you think it's going to be like when you walk out to the cage on January 19th after everything you and, and, and your daughter and your family have been through? What, what do you think is going to go through your mind? You know, there's a lot of things that can go through my mind, but um, I believe it's going to be just like any other fight. That's how I'm going to treat it. Um, of course, there's more at stake. You know, this is my biggest fight. I'm going against Paige. She's definitely a well-known name. Um, you know, and um, but I'm not going to overthink. And, you know, I'm just going to go out there and do my thing. I wish you the best, Rachel. Thank you so much for doing this. And hello to your daughter. She finally made a cameo right in the back over there. Oh, let me say hi. Yeah, she made a... Uh, hello. <laughs> Thanks for being so good. <laughs> that's what youtube does <laughs> yes i know i have three of my own and uh it's amazing how youtube like can silence going on youtube but i was like today girl you gotta go on youtube for at least <laughs> 20 minutes just hold on <laughs> well i i really appreciate it um uh, I, I commend you on how you've been handling everything uh as i said you're an inspiration to a lot of people so um you know kudos to you good luck in the last week of Thank training you. uh good luck in the fight and looking forward to seeing you out there in brooklyn Thank you so much, Ariel. It's my pleasure to be on here. See you soon. Okay, there she is. Rachel Ostovich joining us. Uh, appreciate her time very much and appreciate her daughter's time very much as well. I know it's very hard for a five-year-old uh, to be sitting in the car quiet like that. That is a very tough thing to do, um, having three of my own. It's damn near impossible, but uh, thank you so much to her, and she will be fighting on the ESPN Plus card on January 19th in Brooklyn against Paige Van Zandt. Greg Hardy is also fighting on that card in the co-main event against Alan Crowder. Main event is TJ Dillashaw versus Henry Cejudo for the UFC flyweight title. Very much appreciate her coming on and, uh, and talking about everything that's been going on in her life over the last two and a half months with a lot of grace and class. So thank you to Rachel and thank you to her manager, Brian Butler, for making that happen as well.